In this lesson, we'll take a look at increasing and decreasing functions. So in other words, where is the function increasing, where is it decreasing? And if you take a look at my example here, I have a cubic shape graph. And the function is increasing as you go from left to right if you're going up. So it's increasing along there. So it also be increasing along here as well. And so I've defined uh, that maximum point to have an x-coordinate of a and this minimum point to have an x-coordinate of b. So notice that anywhere to the left of a along the x-axis, the function is increasing. To the right of b, or greater than b, the function is also increasing. So I could write those as intervals. It's increasing where x is less than a and also where x is greater than b. Now, if you draw a tangent line in any of those intervals, so for example, if I were to draw a tangent line here, or here, here, or here, notice that all of those tangent lines are sloped upward. So the derivative would be positive in all of those places. So a positive derivative means that the function is increasing. Now the function is decreasing along here between a and b. So the interval is between a and x is between a and b. And notice if I draw a tangent line there, anywhere in there, the tangent line slopes downward. And so a downward sloping tangent line means the derivative is negative. So a negative derivative means the function is decreasing. Now, one last thing here. If I were to draw tangent lines at this maximum point or this minimum point, notice that the tangent line is horizontal there. That means that the derivative is zero in both of those places. The first derivative is zero. So notice that a function changes from increasing to decreasing where the derivative is zero, or decreasing to increases where, where the derivative is zero. So setting the derivative to zero gives you those places where the function might change from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. And we'll use that idea in the example on the next page. So in this example, we're asked to find upon what intervals is this function increasing or decreasing. And we're going to do this without the aid of a graph. So the first thing that I would do is differentiate this function. So the derivative of 2x cubed would be 6x squared using the power rule. The derivative of negative 9x squared would be minus 18x. And the derivative of 12x is 12. 2 is a constant, so its derivative would be 0. So I would set that equal to 0. And notice in this equation, the entire equation is divisible by 6. So I can make it simpler by div dividing everything by 6 and get x squared minus 3x plus 2 equals 0. So we would try to factor this. I wouldn't bother to use the quadratic formula because it factors fairly easily. Look for two numbers to add to negative 3, multiply to positive 2. So that's negative 1 and negative 2. So x minus 1 and x minus 2 would be the factors. So setting each of these to 0, we get 1 and 2 as the places where the derivative is 0. So on my number line, I'll place the 1 and 2. So it's broken the number line or the x-axis down into uh, three intervals, to the left of 1, between 1 and 2, and to the right of 2. At 1 and 2 is where the derivative, of course, is 0. And so all we need to do is investigate the value of the derivative, in fact, just the sign, really, in these three intervals. So I'm going to take a number to the left of 1. I'm going to take 0. I could take any number of 1. If I want to take negative 102, I could. But any number to the left of 1 will work in this interval. So we plug 0 in place of x in the derivative. And of course, this part would all be 0, and you would just get 12 for your derivative. Now, it doesn't matter that it's 12. The fact that it's greater than 0 is what's important. So I'll put a, a plus here to represent it's greater than 0. Now, next I'm going to take a number between 1 and 2. And I'm going to use 1.5. But you could take any number between 1 and 2. If you want to use 1.95, that still works. And we'll substitute that number in place of x in the derivative. And that works out to negative 1.5. It doesn't matter what numerically it is. The fact that it's negative is what's important. So the negative derivative means it's decreasing between 1 and 2. And then I'll take a number above 2. I'll take 3. So I'll put 3 in place of x. And actually, it turns out to be 12 again, just substituting that number in place of x in the derivative. And so it's a positive derivative there. So it's gone back to increasing again. So now I need to state where is it increasing, where is it decreasing. It's increasing below 1 and to the right of 2. So those intervals would be where x is less than 1 and where x is greater than 2. <coughs> it's decreasing between 1 and 2. So I would write that as x 
is greater than 1 but less than 2, or 1 is less than x is less than 2. That means the same thing. So that's the decreasing interval.